Welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you exactly how to set up the Celestron PowerSeeker 127 EQ telescope. I'm literally going to be getting all of the items out of the box. I'm going to be showing you step by step exactly what you need to do and also providing you with some tips and suggestions along the way. So if you like the sound of this, then please hit the like button. Any questions about assembly along the way, please drop them down below and I will get back to you. I'll try and help you as much as I can. And also someone who's just got this telescope, be sure to subscribe because I'm gonna be releasing a lot of content about getting the most out of it. So with that said, let's delve into the steps. Now the first thing that I personally like to do is just get all of the different elements out of each box. And that's my first tip for you. I would recommend that you keep every single one of these boxes and just be kind of aware of what boxes they came out from. It's really, really good if you're going to store your telescope away. It's also very, very important if you ever do decide to sell your telescope on um, and sell it as a used telescope. So just bear that in mind. Now, one of the benefits of Celestron as a brand is that everything comes in really nice packaging, as you will see here. And the other benefit is that if you navigate over to the Celestron website, I'll actually drop a link in the description below, um, you can see what accessories come included by default. So as an example, with this telescope, we get, um, this is a, a three times barley lens. We also get a 20 millimeter erecting eyepiece. And also this one here, I believe is the 10 millimeter. Uh, it doesn't quite say it on there, but I believe that is 10 millimeter. But yeah, as I say, you can head over to that site and just make sure you've got everything out of the box, particularly important if you have actually bought this uh, secondhand. So the first thing we need to do is to set up the tripod. Very, very simple at this stage. All we need to do is spread the legs outward until they are fully extended and then push down the center leg brace. So I'll just show you that now. All you need to do literally at this point is literally just do this. So we're spreading that outward, make sure they're fully extended and locked and then making sure that center leg brace is set up optimally. Now we need to extend the center portion of each of the three tripod legs down typically between six and 12 inches. It obviously depends on your needs. And then we just use the tightening screw on each leg to secure the extended leg in place. So here you'll see the tightening screw. There'll be one on each leg. Uh, basically they'll probably be, well, they'll probably be quite tight to begin with. So you basically need to um, unscrew those. I've done that ahead of time. So screw uh, anti-clockwise. And then once you've done that on each of the different legs, you'll notice that you're able to just literally lift the, the tripod up. And you're basically gonna want to Make sure they're fully extended again, and then just work your way through each leg. So I like to focus on one at a time. I'm screwing that in clockwise. That's now nice and tight. Then basically go to the next leg. And then I'm screwing on that in there. And that's now secure. But one more leg, again, just make, just make sure that this is level and make sure your legs are equally extended. So last leg, and then we're done on this step. And that's done like so. Now we're fully stable, we just want to add the accessory tray. So it comes in a little kind of square flat box. This is the accessories tray. This is where we can put the different eyepieces, the barley lens when they're not in use. If you turn this over, you'll notice there's a little screw. And then in the center here, you'll notice there's an area for us to screw it in. So we are literally just trying to, sometimes it helps put our finger underneath. And then yeah, we're just screwing it in place. Again, clockwise, you'll hear a little bit of friction as it starts to get you know tighter and then just keep working your way and it'll get to a position where it gets quite you know gets quite firm don't go too much that is now securely in place you'll see here one thing i should quickly mention is that because the way i've screwed this on not all of the accessory pieces are available so sometimes you have to just readjust i've gone uh yeah sometimes as you see just keep manipulating it until all of the accessory holes are available to put your components in. It does take a little bit of adjustment and sometimes uh, some of them will be kind of covered. But as long as you've got the kind of the main circles available, that's, that's gonna suffice. Now we need to add the equatorial mount and it will come in this nicely packaged bubble wrap. So take that out. I'm just gonna put that safely on the floor. And all you need to do at this stage is literally put it into the center. So you'll look here, you'll see this kind of mounting area. And then if you look underneath, you should have a mounting bolt. And we're essentially, if you push your fingers, hopefully you can see this hand here, push that downwards and then screw this in. 
Uh, so I'm going clockwise and that's just going to secure the mount in place. You have to go quite away and you'll now notice that I am in a good position. So what we now need to do is essentially adjust the equatorial mount so that it is aligned with what we want to observe. So you can use the internet or a map to basically find out the approximate latitude of what you want to observe. And then we are just going to use the latitude adjustment screw in the equatorial mount until our latitude is indicated on the latitude scale. So it sounds a little bit complex, but let me just walk you through it. What I like to do first and foremost is just flip this around. So I've, I've, I've realigned, so you can realign this by the way, to an area that suits. And then I'm just going to, you notice if I just do this, literally put it up like that. And then here is the latitude screw and here is the hole. So what you're essentially doing, and you, I'm, it's gonna be quite tr tricky because I'm doing this with one hand, but I'm screwing this in clockwise. There we go, I'm in. So you wanna thread that in. And then if we watch this, you'll see what I mean in a minute. So let me just get this going. You'll notice, hopefully, if I hold the camera still, this starts to go upwards. So, and that's what I mean by finding the, uh, the right latitude. So look, if you see this now, ready? Ready? It's really, you might have to look really closely, but that is going up. So if I keep, if I keep, if I keep doing this, right, let me try and be as still as possible. That's gonna keep going up and pointing into the sky. So perhaps the best way to see this actually is from this angle, but it's going up. I can tell you that is going up and we're just trying to basically pivot our mount to the right location in the sky. Next you need two things, the counterweight bar, which is really heavy, so be a bit careful. Don't wanna drop that on your foot. And then you need this counterweight bar. It's the one that looks like this. And then you basically need to thread it about halfway down. I feel I might get some questions on this part, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's finished. And then I'll walk you through exactly how to do it. You do need two hands. Again, be very, very careful with the counterweight because it's heavy. But essentially what we need to do is we've threaded that about halfway through and we've locked that in place using this lever here. So that screw essentially, if you can imagine it, that's going in here and it's locking that, that counterweight bar in place. So it's so that the, the counterweight is positioned about halfway up. And then we are screwing this in to an entry point here. So now we can see it's finished. That's what it should look like. Let me just show you it in action. So imagine I've gone back a step now. This is what it should look like before it's been attached to the telescope. Then if you look under here, let me just move my camera. Hopefully you can see, you can see a little uh, finger out the way. Can you see a little, yeah, there you go. So basically, if I go back now, we are putting that in here. So keep your hand holding this, your left hand holding this, and then, uh, and then we're screwing that in. So I'm screwing that in, I'm going clockwise, hopefully you can see that. And you'll notice, keep your eye on this bit here, because you can see the threading, and if you, you lined up properly, and if it's going in. So keep doing that, and you'll get to a point where it, locks in place you can even hold that bit there and there we go i am now i now have the counterweight in place okay now we need to slide the chrome end of the slow motion control cables onto the equatorial mount gear shaft so it sounds a little bit confusing you'll have two of these we essentially need the longer one at this precise moment you then need to essentially unscrew this a little bit and then in terms of this part here, we're looking for the thinner bit, and then you basically put it on there. So make sure it's all the way down, and then screw this in place, and that should secure that in place. So that is now done. So now we just need to add the shorter of the slow motion control cables. This time we are adding it to this part here. So you'll see this sticking out. So we've got the longer one at the top, now we need to put it on here. So again, similar process. Let me just put that down a sec. Right, you unscrew this. Again, make sure that you can, that that hole's open. Pushing it down, and then again, screwing it in place. So it's a little bit fiddly, but we should be able to screw that in place. So for this next bit, I'd actually recommend doing it on the floor with the optical tube. This is a bit bizarre, but essentially we're gonna be removing um, the tube rings, so these here, we're gonna be removing them from the optical tube, how it comes kind of packaged to us, and we're gonna basically be putting them onto the mount. So in order to do that, you just need to unscrew both of these. So keep 
keep going. And then you want to remove these as well. These are called wing nuts. Uh, I've only got one. I seem to have uh, misplaced mine from when I packaged it up before. Hopefully it's somewhere else, but you should have two. Uh, don't worry about that for now. I'll work this out in due course. But that's essentially what we need to do here. At this point, you should notice that these rings literally open up. So that's essentially what you need to do. And then we're going to take the optical tube out of these rings. What you now need to do is take those two rings over to the mount. You'll notice at the top, there are two holes, one at the front here, one at the back, or that could be the front and the back. And we're basically just going to, you'll notice where we took off that black wing nut, there's this little kind of screw area. We're basically just going to align those on top. So you'll see like this. And then with that black wing nut, we're going to secure it in place. So we're essentially adding uh, those rings to the, te uh, to the mount. Now, bear with me because this is really tricky to do while recording. Uh, it shouldn't be too challenging for you. But as I say, I'm going to pause just to make sure I can thread it on and then show you what it looks like. Well, here you can see I've now put both of them on. And we're now in a position, hopefully, to add the optical tube. So at this stage, I'm just going to want to remove any of this packaging, obviously. Uh, you can keep this on for now, the cover, but just make sure that you really take care of your optical tube. And yeah, just remove all of this additional packaging. So when it comes to adding the optical tube to the mount, we've got these rings in place. Remember, these are unscrewed. So what we want to do is open them up. So if you do that, if you can see, they're now opened up. And another thing before we put it on, this focuser here needs to be positioned at the end of the counterweight. So that tells me that needs to be on there. Let's go around until we've got the, there we go, that the right way up. That slots in there like that. Now don't let go, hold that in place. And at this stage, we need to go around and put these over because that's going to secure it in place. Still hold it. So what I've done is I've put those, if you can see that, those rings over. And now, as you can probably expect, we are tightening them in place using this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop the recording and do it and then show what it looks like finished. I don't wanna drop the optical tube. So I've now put it on, I'm just gonna show you exactly what I did. Obviously put these down and then I've screwed those into place. So I've screwed that into that and it's just holding the optical tube in place. You'll be very, very careful. You just do not drop this. Um, again, if I just quickly show you the other way around, this needs to be over this weight, okay? So you'll be pleased that we haven't got too much left to go. What we now need to do though is add the finer scope. So take both of these off and make sure you keep them the caps, okay? So that'll keep, keep the finer scope protected if you ever want to store this away. So put it back in the bag it came from basically, that's the best tip I can give you. And then put that bag somewhere safe. And then what we need to do, hopefully you can see, if not, let me just move this up. There are two little screws here. Uh, and let me just put the, put the finer scope on the accessory tray for now. You need to unscrew both of these little nuts. Keep both of them because you're going to need these. Do not lose these. Painful if you to lose them. So they screw for quite a long time before they come off. Keep both of them. Now be careful when you're setting up your telescope because if you do this outside and drop these, they can be hard to find. So you do that and then you basically put your finder scope on with, if we were looking at this, the larger side out. So the larger side um, would be over the weight if that makes sense so i'll put it on and i'll show you what i mean if i'm not making much sense right so so now i just need to use these little nuts that i took off to basically get keep this finder scope in position hopefully you can see that if you can't doesn't matter because i'll show you the finished thing once you've got one on it's relatively stable but again you should be using two Right, so they are now in place, okay? Let me just quickly show you that. I don't know if you saw all of that. It's quite, as I say, tricky to, to get it all on camera. But these two are now in place and that larger side is pointing out. So if I show you what I mean by this, the when I take this off, 
that's aligned, if that makes sense. So that is, remember, that is the uh, lens cover. So now you just need to loosen these two screws. So I think that's anti-clockwise, I think I've gone anti-clockwise. So make them nice and loose, and then this cap should basically come off. Again, I want to be careful. So that's a cap there uh, protecting it. I'm just going to do this off camera. I don't want to damage anything. So here you can see I've prized the cap a little bit off. You basically just need to do that. And then you've got this area here. And it's from here we are now going to start using the other accessories. So at this point, we just need to add our 20 millimeter erecting eyepiece. So take it out of the bag. Again, I'd recommend keeping all these little bags, put them somewhere safe. And we are just going to take that out. I'm just going to put that on the floor for now, but I will get that in a minute. Take this cap off, and then you just need to essentially put it in here. And then you need to use these screws, hopefully you can see, to tighten it into position. Now you should be ready to take off the lens cap, and you'll be really pleased to hear this next part and that is you are ready to start observing. So to do that, look through the eyepiece, which is obviously here now, we've got the 20 millimeter in here, that's the eyepiece. So look through here to begin observing. And yeah, you can focus your image by turning the knobs on the focuser. So that are, these are those there, each side. It's on the other side as well, so you can turn those. Um, and then yeah, it's just a matter of using all of the different accessories, really. That's when you can leverage the accessory tray. I've just popped them in like that for now, just to know where I'm keeping them. But yeah, you basically take them out of that outer packaging. When it comes to using them, you can use the three times Barlow lens for additional magnification. You literally just put the Barlow lens into um, the focuser. So when you to do that, you'd literally be putting it in here, and then you'd put the eyepiece into that Barlow lens. So it's really, really easy to do. Um, and yeah, you can use, use the eye, different eyepieces, the 20 millimeter or the 10 millimeter, uh, depending on what you want to see. And that is how to set up uh, the Celestron PowerScope 127EQ. Hope this video was useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. And with that said, best of luck, and I hope you have an excellent day.